Okay, thank you. So between now and lunch, I'm going to tell you how you can supersize your video conferences, how you can use WebRTC to create truly big, geographically distributed, and yet fully interactive conferences. So most of you probably know this by now. When setting up an interactive video conference in WebRTC, you need a network element called the Selective Forwarding Unit, or an SFU for short. Every participant in the conference sends his video up to the SFU, and the SFU forwards that video to the other participants in the call. <laughs> Few important characteristics of the SFU to keep in mind. An SFU only forwards video, so it adds little additional delay into the video streams. It's also, as the name implies, selective, which means it doesn't blindly forward all the video to all the participants. It picks and chooses from the incoming video stream a subset to forward to the receiver. And that subset could be different for every one of the receivers. So depending on that receiver's available bandwidth or display or who and what he's watching, it would pick a subset of the video to forward to that receiver. So if the receiver is watching the loudest participant, the loudest speaker in a big window, you'd pick a lot of resolution for that. And if it's thumbnails, probably lower resolution for that. So it's sending only the minimally required amount of media to optimize the experience for every individual receiver. Last but not least, an SFU corrects errors. Many transmission errors that occur on the downlink to one of the endpoints can be corrected at an SFU without impact anybody else on the call. So um, an SFU localizes the error correction only between itself and the endpoint that's experiencing these errors. So SFUs are great, but they still have limitations. Sooner or later, you're going to run into the capacity limits of the machine that's running your SFU. It could be CPU, more, more likely when doing video, it'll be your bandwidth. Consider a high quality uh, video stream, 720p resolution, 30 frames per second. To get a good video out of that, that's going to take two megabits per second. In a multi-point video conference, you're probably receiving more than you're sending, so think three to four megabits per second on you know, a typical giga gigabit Ethernet link. That's uh, 100, 150 participants max. Now, that's a pretty large conference, but you do want to be able to support larger conference if the need arises. And with one SFU, you're going to, um, at some point, hit your limit. Another thing to consider geographically distributed conferences, as many large conferences today tend to be. You have your SFU in one location. Here I'm showing North America. Uh, and you have many remote participants that have to connect to that SFU over very long interregional, intercontinental links. Bandwidth on those links gets very expensive. So if you think about the loudest speaker in North America, sending his video up to the SFU. That SFU now has to replicate the video and send a copy to every one of the remote participants that's requesting it. Multiple copies of the video are traversing the long interregional links. That's a lot of cost. The cost of hosting such a conference quickly gets out of hand. To make things worse, Long links, high latency. We said the SFU corrects errors, but correcting errors when the round trip time is big is difficult. And usually, uh, the quality of the video will be impacted. So the overall perceived quality of this distributed conference is going to go down. To overcome some of these limitations, we introduced the notion of cascaded SFUs. Cascaded SFUs are two or more SFUs that are interconnected in such a way that one conference can span multiple SFUs. 
Participants can join any one of the SFUs in the cascade and seamlessly interact with all the other participants in the conference, and that's regardless of whether the other participants are on the same SFU as they are or on a different SFU in the cascade. Now you can use cascading to create a conference that dynamically grows to virtually any size as participants join. Start off with a stack of SFUs. As conferences are being created, you distribute them uh, around on the, your available SFUs. Since you usually don't know up front which conferences are going to be big, which conferences are going to stay small, you usually don't have that information, might as well uniformly distribute them across uh, all your SFUs, because guessing is futile anyway. As one of the conference grows and the SFU it's on starts reaching or exceeding its limits, and yet you have more participants trying to come in, you can then, on the fly, cascade in another SFU that has excess capacity, spill that conference over to the new SFU and have the new participants join that SFU, and of course they're all in the same conference. You can continue doing that again and again, as long as new participants are trying to join the conference, until all the participants are accommodated and have joined the conference on one of the cascaded SFUs. Now consider our geographically distributed conference. You can place SFU clusters strategically in any one of your regions, in every one of your regions used some location-based routing algorithm to connect users to the SFU cluster closest to them. As more and more participants join the conference on the local cluster, you can grow the conference as we previously described. And when a request is made to join that same conference on two separate SFU clusters, you can then on the fly cascade them and create one conference that spans both geographies. Also, consider your uh, error correction mechanisms now. They are localized to the um, local cluster. So if you have errors, they're fixed between the local cluster and the local participants on the short regional links, and they are not, don't have to traverse the long intercontinental links. And the case of our loudest speaker in North America again, he sends one copy of his video to his local SFU cluster. That SFU cluster only has to forward one copy of the video over to the remote clusters. That's only one copy that's traversing the expensive links, and the local SFU cluster makes local copies and sends them over much cheaper, shorter links, or maybe a LAN if it's a, a one location, and that dramatically decreases the cost of hosting your distributed uh, conference. So, um, from experience of uh, implementing cascaded SFUs, a few considerations when you go about it. First of all, keep an eye out for that delay. In the cascaded scenario, you may be hopping through several uh, SFUs end to end. To keep a conference interactive, you want the end to end delay to be as low as possible. So you don't want to be adding too much additional delay beyond the network delay, which is fixed and you can do little about. <coughs> to make sure you don't add significant end-to-end -end delay, you should keep the delay through an SFU safely below an order of magnitude less than the network delay. So if you consider a one-hop network delay to be on the order of 100 milliseconds, Optimize your software, very important, optimize your software to keep the delay through an SFU to a few milliseconds at the most. Another consideration um, 
is your active, your loudspeaker selection algorithm. Of course, you want everybody on the call to have the same notion of who the loudest speaker, the loudest participant is at any point in time. And that's regardless if they're on one SFU and the loudest speaker is connected to another SFU in the cascade. So you have to implement a distributed form of your loudest speaker selection that quickly converges on one global loudest speaker across the cascade um, so that everybody can be watching the same person in the big window. I'll also mention that as you're distributing your conferences across the SFUs, you want to reserve capacity if you ever need to cascade in the future. You don't know that going in when you put conferences on your SFUs. And you don't want to get to the point where the SFU is out of capacity and doesn't even have enough capacity to cascade to an SFU that does have. Um, if you think about it, the amount of capacity you have to reserve on, uh, on an SFU is roughly proportional to one additional participant in each one of your conferences. So if you think of a typical SFU uh, supporting tens of conferences, uh, that's tens more phantom uh, participants that you would just allocate resources for when the need arises to cascade to uh, increase your conference uh, size or geographical reach. So just as we don't go out of here thinking this is a very theoretical uh, exercise, networks of cascaded SFUs have been implemented, have been deployed. Uh, video itself uh, deploys such networks in our products, in our uh, service offerings, including video.io, our developer platform as a service. Um, video customers have also deployed such networks. Um, one of them is CERN, the European Council for Nuclear Research, the Higgs boson guys. Um, they have placed SFU clusters in many of their uh, research member facilities across the globe, so that's in Asia, Europe, and the US, despite their name. Um, and they've cascaded them all into one big network. Uh, they make their uh, dashboard publicly uh, viewable, so I can show a snapshot of it here. Um, CERN regularly has update calls, weekly research update calls, where hundreds and hundreds of participants interact. This is an interactive call. This is not a live stream or anything. Hundreds and hundreds of uh, participants across the globe, across this network, interact uh, on these uh, update calls. So to summarize, cascading increases the power of the SFU by allowing you to create conferences that dynamically grow as needed to virtually any number of participants. They greatly reduce the cost of hosting conferences by reducing the amount of bandwidth you have to carry over your inter-regional links, and you do that by strategically placing the clusters in the regions. And they improve the quality of the conference by localizing error correction over short LANs or short RTT links, and uh, um, the overall quality of the conference is thereby greatly improved. Thank you. Thanks, Ray.